Hi, welcome to another video. So I haven't been driving these turbo E36 because it's leaking oil. And I know that's a factory option for E36, but I'm trying to get rid of it. So anytime I start driving it hard and getting in boost, basically anytime the crankcase pressure builds up, it seems like it just wants to smoke like crazy. There's always a leak back here. It's super wet in that back area. I know there's a, a bolt on the back of the block. I checked that, it seems like it's fine. I don't see any leaks around it. So I think the valve cover gasket has some type of hairline crack or something. So we're gonna change that. Um, first of all, the reason I wanna change it too because this kinda looks like crap, not gonna lie. Believe it or not, this is actually painted uh, the same color as the engine bay. The engine's a little dusty right now, but it's actually the same Subaru flaky paint. You can kind of see it on that side. It's actually the same paint, but since it's plastic, that's metal, it just does not match. So we're actually gonna switch it up. I'm gonna try wrinkle black. I think wrinkle black looks cool. I've never tried it, so we're gonna see how it goes. So. Um, we're gonna, I already have another valve cover gasket over here. Yesterday I actually um, got it cleaned up. I sprayed it down with Purple Power and pressure washed the hell out of it, got all the oil out of there. And I actually took out the metal part too that's right there in the middle because you can't paint over that because that has ground straps for the ignition coils. But taking that thing out isn't hard. It just has little tabs on it. It's held in by these little plastic nipples and you just pry those tabs up and the thing comes right off. So that way there's least amount of taping I have to do. I taped up this because I don't want any material in there because that's where the thing, oil thing goes and I don't want anything to leak through. And then I taped up um, all the little, you know, uh, threads. So I'd have no problem putting my ignition coils back on. So that thing is pretty much ready to go. I just need to sand it and just start spraying it. Now it is cold, super cold. I actually literally pushed the car out this morning. M3 was here. I didn't want to start it up and wake the house up. It's early in the morning, but so I literally pushed the car out and we're going to be in the garage and trying to spray it best as we can. I do have a heat gun and hopefully the heat gun will help. So, but anyways, um, first things first, let's get the new valve cover looking cool. All right. So I got it sanded down. I actually scuffed it up with uh, 180 grit which I know is pretty abrasive. I think usually when you paint, you do like 320 or 400, something like that. I don't know, I'm not a professional, but we're not going for a glass-like finish. It's gonna be textured because it's wrinkled. So I just scuffed it up with something pretty abrasive and make sure um, everything sticks. Now this is gonna be a long process because it's gonna take a lot of layers. So the first couple layers, I think is just like dusting, like a sanding. And then every time it sticks to that is when it starts to make texture. And again, I'm going to use the heat gun to help it dry because it's really cold in here. And um, yeah, so we'll see. I never did wrinkle paint before. Hopefully it's cool. Actually, before I start, I need to change my clothes because I don't know why I'm wearing nice clothes in the garage. I already messed up my shirt. Got some little, I don't know what the hell. I, think, I guess it was oil from the bottom. Let me take my nice shoes off at least. All right, I put the E90s on, you know, the dailies. I don't care if these get messed up. So let's start. I wish I had more light in here. Well, I do, actually. Literally. <laughs> All right, here goes nothing. I'm going to start off on the front. That comes out of a weird texture. Yep, that's a weird texture. I said, just gonna do a a dusting. Let it dry. I'm not too worried about the middle. That's gonna be covered anyways. But I'll spray it, and then um, so let's get the middle. I'm not worried about these things, these little rubber grommets, because they gotta be removed anyways. Because I have to use these. So. Those have to be removed. I already loosened them up. Last time I broke them. So I actually was real careful and twisted them with the pliers and they're loose now. So, but uh, yeah, that's, that's gonna be the first coat. So I'm just gonna let that dry just like that and then start spraying again over and over again. Forgot the cap.
All right, well, while that's drying up, I uh, just want to let you guys know there's another drift event coming up in like two weeks. Um, I signed up for it. It's probably the last one for a little while because I really need to get on this turbo car. Um, but the car drove perfect last time, and honestly, it's set up like I don't have to change anything. Normally, like I have to stress and change stuff before the next event. This one, I just literally just buy some new tires and do the same thing. So, I mean, that's why I signed up for but after that, um, probably not going to drift for a little while because, again, I need to focus on this car. It looks nice. There's a lot of little things wrong with this car. And show season is starting. We got Southern Fresh coming up. I got Riverside coming up. This car has never made it to Riverside. It's always been down. And um, so I'm definitely making a Riverside this, this year. I have to. So I have to do a lot of little things. Like I have like window seals. The thing still has to get detailed. It's painted, but it still has to get detailed. And I still need all the like window trim and all that stuff. None of that stuff is on there. That's why I don't really bring it out that often, like to car shows. I'll drive it. I'll drive it just like for no reason, because I mean, it runs. <laughs> and but uh, yeah, for those that want to see it, like caffeine and octane and stuff, I don't bring it out because it's kind of it's kind of jank. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, door cards are still. I removed them again because they're kind of falling off, and I just I need to buy some new door cards or something because I'm I'm tired of messing with them. This these little eBay things. They were good for a while, but they're starting to fall off now. So I have to get OEM ones of those. So everything I need to do is all these window seals, door cards, all that stuff is expensive. And I can't keep dumping money into drifting and then try to fix this thing too. So drifting's got to take a little pause. And while it's taking a pause, I'm going to work on this thing, making this thing super pretty, make it show season. And then after that, then I can make the show car, I mean the drift car, actually nice. So that's... That's the plan. Just want to let y'all know since I'm sitting here watching paint dry. I'm kind of bored right now. All right, time for the second coat. Like I said, it just dries on kind of thin. Like I'm going to do another thin layer. And then after that, probably start doing heavy coats. And then I'll start using the uh, actual heat gun. So again, for the thin thin coats, not really worried about it. Just want to coat it, give, some, give it something to stick to. So I'm not going to be able to install the valve cover today. Uh, first of all, it has to cure for quite a while after I finish painting it. And um, I actually have stuff to do today. So I actually only have like an hour and a half to paint. And then uh, probably swap it out in the middle of the week. And then after that, I'll take it for a drive and see if it still smokes. Because that's actually the ultimate goal. It will look better, I think. I think it'll look better when it's all nice and painted. But, you know, it has to be functional too. So I really think it has a hairline crack in there somewhere and maybe we'll find it when we take it off and if not then whatever it just looks cooler at least i did something right but it's actually jacob's birthday you know jacob with the white m3 um so we're actually going to amp to ride go-karts um they have a nice go-kart track if you're from georgia or maybe out of georgia close to it you've probably heard of this track i've never done it um, none of us have actually ever done it so it'll be first time for all of us and it's going to be pretty fun i might vlog it I don't know. Um, it depends. When we get there, we'll see. I know we can use like our own helmet, our own gloves and stuff. So I have a helmet that I drift with, but it's an open face helmet. I don't know if that's going to work on a go-kart track. I get smacked in the face with rocks, so I might not use that helmet. And if I rent their helmet, um, I don't know if they'll let me, you know, stick a GoPro on it. I guess we'll see. Um, if I can make it a vlog, if not, then I won't. So, um, if I do make it a vlog, you'll probably see that one before this because this will take a longer process. So this, I guess this is Fortune Teller Black talking to you right now. Anyways, I think we're ready for another coat. All right, time to get heavy. Right now, it almost looks gloss. <laughs> so I'm going to start spraying it heavy. And I got the heat gun. I'm going to start heating it and see if it starts to wrinkle or whatever it's going to do. So. Um, again, I'm not really worried about spraying it too heavy because I'm not worried about runs or anything. It's supposed to be a textured finish, so it's not going to look like gloss. So if it runs, it will be like, oh my god, that's so ugly. No, it's supposed to be ugly. So let's try it. Spray it heavy. See what happens. It's like starting to wrinkle, but it honestly just looks like bad paint. <laughs> I don't want to judge it yet. 
But I really hope it gets like a actual wrinkle finish because this it's early. It's only the third coat, the first heavy coat. But right now it just looks like bad paint. Like it looks like I just sprayed it gloss black, rushed. This is. Oh yeah, we getting wrinkly, baby. We getting wrinkly. So I switched up the strategy a little bit. I was using the heat gun too fast. I was spraying it and then immediately after dry, trying to dry it with the heat gun. Let it dry a little bit on its own and then hit it with the heat gun. And then as soon as I did that, then like the heat makes it wrinkly. So uh, I did one part. I'm going to show you another part while it's still kind of wet in that area. So on the front, you see it's like starting to wrinkle now. This is still wet. But now that it's been sitting for a minute, turn the heat on and you're going to watch it wrinkle in front of your eyes. See that heat going to it? Now it's starting to wrinkle up. Ooh, boy! Yeah. So after like, I don't know, maybe after like two or three more coats with that same process, this thing should be nice and wrinkly. Hell yeah. I'll worry for a minute, not gonna lie to you. Hopefully I got enough in the can. There was only one can at the store. And this is probably, you know, <laughs> maybe two thirds of the way gone. But now I'm in the wrinkly coats. They should, it should be fine. So let me heat gun the rest of this and then start spraying again, let it sit and then heat gun and hopefully we'll be wrinkled. All right, I just went over this whole thing just with a heat gun. I haven't even sprayed another coat yet. This is literally just the heat gun, and look how wrinkly it is now. So this is definitely going to start looking better with the next few coats. And if I do the same strategy, let it sit and then heat gun it, because this is, you know, even the cap is starting to look good. So we're getting somewhere. So this is this is pretty cool. It's like it's almost like the heat makes it bubble, and then it just stays in a bubble. I don't know how heat wrap works, or I mean heat wrinkle wrap works, but I don't know. I just know you do need a heat gun, because without a heat gun, I don't think it would actually do that. <laughs> Could be wrong, but I don't think it would. Since my can is starting to get light, like I feel like it's maybe two thirds down, um, I'm really gonna focus more on this part, because that's the part you're really gonna see, because I mean, I'm still gonna keep the stainless cover. I mean, the only thing you're really gonna see is this, and maybe, you know, the top right here, so. I really need to focus on this part. This is the important part. So I don't want to run out trying to do everything else. So focus on that mostly. But I will still try to do the rest of it. So just in case, you know, disclaimer, the front might look better than the rest. But if it does, that's because I used more on the front. So let's just start spraying. It doesn't even get glossy anymore. That's a good thing. I think, right? All right, now we let it chill, dry on its own a little bit, and then heat gun. All right, I let this dry. Now it's time to dry, dry, and see if it gets more wrinkly. All right, this is where we're at now. This is actually starting to look pretty legit. I'm definitely gonna spray like maybe one or two coats and do the same thing over again, but that's actually looking pretty, pretty uh, detailed. So um, uh, it does actually start to wrinkle on its own without heat because I haven't used the heat gun on that yet, but I'm going to because I'm kind of running out of time. Uh, like I said, I got things to do today. So I'm gonna do like one or two more coats and then just let it sit overnight and uh, hopefully it looks pretty dope. But uh. Pretty excited about this. This actually looks really good. So I need to focus a little bit more on the front because the front, I kind of missed it a little bit. So get a little bit heavier on the front and I think this will be a successful job. So nice.
So I'm not going to bore you with the whole same repetitive thing over and over again. I'm going to do like two more coats of it. And um, then I'll just show you guys what the finished product looks like. So you'll see the finished product in like two seconds. All right, guys, I'm back. The uh, go-kart track was really, really fun. Um, I actually was able to film. So there will be a vlog or there already was a vlog. Probably put that out first. It'd be easier to edit. It'd be quick. This is, like I said, I gotta wait till the weekend to actually finish this whole video. So, but um, I had to finish it up when I came back. I'm gonna show you what I did, show you the finished product, and show you something that I kind of found out that kind of gives you, I don't know, you take this information how you want it. All right, here is the finished product. I think it looks pretty good, especially for something out of a spray can. I know they make wrinkle black powder coat, but it's plastic, you can't powder coat it. So, um, I think it looks pretty decent. Um, again, I focused on more of the front than this stuff because this is what you're going to see. Just like that. That's literally all you're going to see. But I did the whole thing anyways. And then I'm like 99% out of that can. I might be able to get a few more sprays, but it's, it's not worth it. So it's not perfect. It's a little kind of funky right there. It takes a very long time to dry. So I'm going to let it sit here for like 24 hours. Probably bring it in the house because it's warmer in the house and just put it like in a closet or something and let it completely dry so this is what i found out before i left the house i sprayed it and just left because like i said it does kind of wrinkle on its own but when you spray it and let it wrinkle on its own it's glossy so when i came back everything was glossy i didn't like the gloss i kind of wanted the matte look so i sprayed i practiced on a section right here that's something you wouldn't see just in case it didn't come out right and I spray just this section, let it sit, and then use the heat gun. And when I use the heat gun, it came out matte. So you can kind of see, maybe you can see it on camera. It's kind of a line somewhere around that area. You can see it in, my, in the reflection right there. You can see it in the reflection. There's a, there's a matte line and a glossy line. And this section became matte after I used the heat gun. And the rest of it, I didn't touch. The rest of it's kind of glossy, but this I sprayed again and just use the heat gun on the front so the front is very matte and that's the finish i want so the front's perfect well mostly perfect a little line right there or something like that but i'm not messing with it anymore it might dry up overnight it might even look even better i don't know but job complete for now so i'm going to go ahead and put this up somewhere so it doesn't get touched so again it takes a very very long time to dry I bet if I wipe my finger over there, it'll probably come right off. So I'm not going to touch it. So whenever I finish or whenever this thing fully dries and I'll remove this one, swap it and we'll be good to go. But I like that. That looks good. valve cover is off um doesn't look bad under there um but looking at the top um it it might not be what it looks like but it looks like this <laughs> but i really think i really think that's just condensation like i said uh it smokes a lot so i mean it's got to be a crack somewhere in it i can't find any there are some questionable spots and i did find one thing is a little interesting there is a crack right here i'm about to turn this camera around so i can get better views there are some questionable things that may have caused some leaks um that is a crack that i don't know how it got there and that half circle that's actually factory so here's a factory one half circle and um but that is cracked that's a pretty good crack right there let it focus and um you can see right there in that small hole that that could be an issue especially because that is in the back of the valve cover too and that's where most of the leaking was another crack right there all right so that's what it looks like now so i'm gonna go ahead and put the new one on there i don't have to show you guys that and then we'll just go for a drive and see if it fixes the problem um got all new gaskets new rubber grommets and stuff um just got back from the drift event yesterday today's sunday i'm um, gonna start of this video last saturday 
and uh, it was fun. It was a fun, fun event. Um, I ran into some barriers. Oh, shit. Broke a car and then fixed it. And then, yeah, it was just fun. Just stay tuned for that video. Um, I just got back and I just, off, I haven't even unloaded my tools yet. They're still in the box and I'm just pulling tools out of there right now. So, um, but yeah, let me put this thing back together and I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, valve cover is set in place. It's not bolted down yet, but that looks really, really good. That looks perfect. That's like exactly how I pictured it in my head. And I'm pretty happy about that. I don't really like the cap. I'll probably just use the old cap. I don't know. It just looks kind of weird. Looks out of, like it really looks out of place, but that looks sick. And like I said, you can see it all along here too. That looks really good, but can't bolt it down yet. So I have new rubber grommets, but they're too small. Um, they look kind of weird. I didn't even open them. I kind of looked at them, put a bolt next to it, and like this is not the right size. So um, I actually checked the part number on the back, and they're actually for like E46, 318s, and like E38s and V8s. So I don't know how I got that, but um, yeah, I can't, I can't do nothing with that. So looks like um, it's going to be another week before I get this thing bolted down. <laughs> it's going to be like a three long episode, three week long episode on a valve cover. It's ridiculous. So I'm filming a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff coming out and eventually this video will come out too. So I um, guess I'll see you guys next weekend.
right now is coming from that. Ow, fuck, I burned myself. <laughs> so right now it's coming from this back hole right here. Um, I don't think that bolt is tight enough. It looked like it was tight, but it looks like there's a gap in it because I can see oil dripping right there. So let me try to tighten that and see if that fixes it. All right, so I found the culprit. Um, there is a gap right here in the very back of the valve cover. That bolt is tight, but I wonder if the valve cover is not sitting right because if I zoom in, you can kind of see the gap. Kind of hard to see it on camera. It looks different in person, but there's definitely, I mean, you can see, you can clearly see a gap right there. And it seems like all the oil is coming out of there. The smoke is at least, so oil, smoke, all that because the back of the firewall not back it's not wet over here it was wet over here before in the past so now it's wet on this side so i gotta figure out if that is sitting right or not god i don't want to take this whole fucking thing off again but i might have to i i i, I fucked up um this just, just take a wild guess at what i just did just now um give a big hint i felt like the thing wasn't tight enough so I tightened it, and then I tightened it, and then it loosened. Uh, damn it! So I broke, I broke the stud back there. So I gotta do all this again. This sucks. So I had a great idea on how to remove that stud without removing the valve cover and it would work, but I found another issue. Pretty much everything attached to the valve cover is 10 millimeter bolts, including these bolts out here and the bolts for the ignition coils. Everything is a 10. So to extract that bolt, it's actually a 10 too. So the 10 actually sits here. So I'll pull this one off just to show you guys inside there is a 10. Now a regular 10 won't fit under there. That's why I took the grinding wheel and grinded it down. So now it actually fits. So I can actually take that bolt out, that stud out, what's left of that stud back there and the one that broke and take it out. But the problem is I actually found the issue. It's because this valve cover is not sitting right. It's supposed to be, you know, along the lines or whatever and sit until it's little grooves. It fell out of the groove when I pushed it back in there and it's folded. So it's actually folded down. So stud or no stud, it doesn't matter because it's it's not sitting right. So I pretty much still have to take the valve cover off. There's, there's no real way to put the camera anywhere. You can't see anything. So, um, But I didn't take all the bolts off, but I took like most of them off. So there actually is some flex room with the uh, valve cover. That way I can actually get that stud out from the back. Um, putting the socket through it for some reason it isn't working it works on the front bolt but put it in the rear bolt it isn't working but I got it flexed enough to where I could put a wrench in there and loosen it I already broke it loose I just have to keep going and get that stud out there then I gotta go find a stud um, talk to somebody that lives kind of close they might have one for me and then I'll try to get this new stud on there put the new bolt on there and then hopefully this job is complete so this is um this vlog just went in overtime. I did not want to end on a bad note, so um I'm try to get this done. Woo! <laughs> Got it. I was scared I was gonna drop it in the valve car. Woo! Alright, um some time has passed. Another day has went by and it's all put back together now. Um 
Let's go for a drive. Let's see. That's it. All right, I ain't got nothing else to say. Let's just go for a drive. I think a lot of that little bit of smoke is going to be from um, the fiberglass particles on the heat wrap because it is kind of coming off and kind of crazy. I'm probably going to take it off in a little bit, but so far I might have fixed it. I'm about to give it full send and then um, stop for the house again and see if anything changes. But so far I'm not seeing anything. back in my driveway and it's not smoking up a storm I think I finally fixed it I finally fixed it took like a month to get this damn valve cover on but I think I finally fixed it so um, there's smoke coming out of the catch can that's normal but other than that you know at the beginning of this video like I said with the old valve cover every time I would floor it it'd spray oil against the back of the firewall that would fall down to the downpipe and then it smoked up like crazy and that is seems like it's gone I did do a long fourth gear pull in um on the on the highway and it smoked from there but when i do a long fourth gear pull it kind of boost creeps so like it got up to like 16 psi which i shouldn't be up there i need to do e85 asap so that can be safe but um we're good finally no oil leaks I fixed the turbo oil leak a long time ago fix this oil leak i think i finally have one bmw in this driveway that doesn't leak oil I did it. <laughs> I don't know how long, but I did it. So I think I'll, that's where I'm going to end this video. Success. I'm happy. I'm really happy. And um, get to drive this car more often now. So uh, thanks for watching. Deuces. Sorry for taking the longest crazy ride. Something should have been as simple as spraying a valve cover and putting it on. But hey, we're there. Deuces. See you in the next one.